resident lighting specialist to our residential to Welcome to Residential Tech Talks. I'm Jeremy Glowacki, Executive Editor of Residential Tech Today. On this week's podcast, Mike Jordan joins us from Charlotte, North Carolina, where he is a Chief Product Officer at RTI. With more than 12 years of industry experience, our guest today is known for leading productive, successful product teams. Prior to joining RTI this past December, he spent the previous five years as Senior VP of Products at Snap One, which included leadership of the Control 4 product line. Prior to Snap One, he held a similar role at Core Brands, where he worked with RTI CEO Joe Roberts, who was president of the company at that time. RTI has been busy building a new team with new products on a singular platform designed for success in any channel, resi, office, hospitality, and beyond. As we start looking towards Cedia Expo in September, I thought it was a great time to catch up with one of the veteran control brands in the CI channel and to see how things are going for their new chief product officer so far. Mike Jordan, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, It's great to be here. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. We're recording this on July 9th, and um, you know I always like to check in on even something like the weather for folks around the country to see how things are going. How's the summer going in Charlotte right now? Uh, The summer has been great up until the last couple of weeks, and then it has really settled in. The humidity and temperature are competing to see which number is going to be higher. So we've had (laughs) the uh, afternoon storms rolling through, uh, but it's, it's quite sticky. But uh, things in Charlotte are great. It continues to be uh, a growth hub in the country. It's vibrant. A lot of new and different things seem to pop up every month. Uh, so every time I, uh, I live in, a, in the south part of town and every time I go into town, something's different and changed. So it's, it's, it's a great place to be. Highly recommend it for people to come visit. Yeah, I hear a lot of great things, and it's been a while since I've been there. I need I need to visit one of these days. But uh, um, obviously, you're you're not the most famous Mike Jordan in North Carolina, <laughs> but uh, you've you've had a, a pretty good run as far as uh, big brands in our industry, and uh, you know insights with with companies that we're familiar with, as I met, mentioned in the intro. Um, I, I was curious, though, as a kid growing up, are, are you from North Carolina originally? Is that, that your stomping grounds, or did you uh, come to North Carolina later? We came to North Carolina later in life. I'm originally from Athens, Georgia. Uh, so I'm a Georgia kid that grew up, went to school in South Carolina, and then lived in New England for eight years and uh, had a family and moved back home. I married a North Carolina girl, and Charlotte okay. was, was a great hub to be and uh, a growing place, a lot of newcomers. So it was a really welcoming and a great place to raise a family. My, my kids now are both in college. So uh, we, we literally grew our family here. So yeah, but originally from Georgia. Well, I'm a bulldog. So that's a really interesting to learn about. I, I went to school in Athens myself. Yeah. So uh, well, I grew up off of South good. Millage. So about a mile south of Five Points. So you'll know exactly <laughs> okay. where that was. And, and you do. and I look to be of similar age. So you were probably there. This will bore the non-Athens people, but the Sons Elite of uh, Italy and Pat Steve Arino's there on uh, <laughs> yeah. I spent a lot of time there. I'm sure you did too. Steve Arino's was, yes, uh, a dangerous place uh, to have a pit, multiple pitchers of beer and uh, <laughs> try, try to find a way back to the, the apartment. So, yes, absolutely. That was... <laughs> small world. Look at that. Very, very small. Um, so, how early on were you at all interested in tech? Um, what brought you to the, the CI yeah, channel originally? This might be a little bit blasphemous for my diehards, but I, I'm more of a business guy that loves to make mm-hmm. products. So I like to grow businesses through the creation of, of products and solutions. So I, 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 um, I appreciated the technology, but to me, the technology was like a Sony rack stereo system, uh, uh-huh. which we all start somewhere, right? But I, I wasn't sure. taking things apart. I wasn't um, trying to figure out how they made them work as much as I was enjoying the experience and uh, really enjoying the music and, and those aspects of it. So, uh, yeah, I came to it late in life, but more from a business side. And when you mentioned my past, I, started, I got in the industry in 2012 with uh, Jay Faison and Craig Craze um, and Adam Levy, who, who were the, the original three at what was Snap AV. And mm-hmm. um, they too were, were business people first that saw an opportunity to better serve integrators, um, to, to give them a better solution and better experience and better rewards. And so that's what really got me into it. And I've always been a product guy in my background. I started off in manufacturing. I'm a chemist by training and, mm-hmm. and made polyester, dyed and finished polyester in my first job in textiles. Uh, in South Carolina, then got into the golf industry. I was fortunate enough to design and build and engineer golf balls for Titleist and TaylorMade for a long time. 
and uh, still have a lot of contacts in that that world today. But it's always been about product for me. It's it's the the solving problems for people is kind of what I lean into, and I just I like to do it through product. So I, I got I I got to uh, this industry a little bit late in life, but it's it's a great place to be. I love working in it. Well, so what were some of the industry products that you uh, were in, involved with uh, to give folks like a frame of reference to? Maybe that didn't haven't worked with you directly on anything, but sure. uh, long core brands days and then into the <laughs> yeah. Know, uh, yeah yeah the, the, uh, the control floor stuff the, uh, the the one uh, it's it's kind of my first the first love and it's kind of a funny story on the 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 latest CE Pro really drove it home for me the CE Pro 100 on the the brand survey uh, so when I first got to Snap I had the my I was a business unit manager one of my portfolio products was speakers and the episode was just. I mean, everyone loved the hate episode and everyone, no one admitted that they used it. And it was always just frowned upon. And you looked at CE Pro 100 and guys turned their nose up at it. And then the most recent CE Pro 100 episode was the number one speaker brand. So mm. uh, for, for me, I, I had, I turned it, I can't say I turned it around because it was always successful, but we rebranded it. We got a lot of dealer feedback. We, we told this, the science story that was always there, but we never told it. We just initially at Snap were told it's you know it's thirty percent cheaper than what you're using today, so make more money. So this integrator is just always mad. Well, that's you save money on it. And you can't tell that to your your end customers. Like, why are you putting the episode speaker? And it's like, oh, I make more money on it. You you have to tell the story. So we created the brand, redid the logo, launched it, and it was a long time coming, and it's paid off. So um, I, I I love the audio portions of it. So I've always been responsible for episode. Uh, we, I did the work what we did with Speakercraft. Uh, kind of pivoting towards that uh, at the core brands. And then when I came back to Snap AV in my second stint, taking the triad aspect of it. And then the uh, at, internally, it was called Where Pros Buy Audio at Snap, is trying to be a, a single place to buy all your audio needs. As we know, integrators don't just sell one audio line, they have good, better, best typically. And it fits the customer's needs and the budgets and also the, the integrator's personal taste for what they like from sound. So uh, the audio aspects of it and the building an overall ecosystem through amplification and also from music sources and the streaming I, I was responsible for all that at uh snap then snap one as well as core brands and then also here what we're doing at rti uh at, at um control four um I, during my time there was we we got to do the halo we, we did that from scratch the new remotes um mm -hmm. built on the great legacy that control four had with sr260 and they continue to to kind of take the most more current approach kind of fix some issues that neo brought to the forefront in a in a more dealer and end user uh, friendly uh, environment. The uh, backlit buttons was a was always a fun topic, and it also did the core controllers there. Uh, and I'm bouncing around a bit. Forgive me, Jeremy. It just as they're popping into my head. But Alon, uh, when we got to Alon, we did the surveillance aspects of it. We did the rebranding. We did the the uh, the AO release that introduced a lot of new features. So a, a lot of what my success has just been from asking dealers questions and integrators mm -hmm. what they need. Um, and then trying to solve those problems specifically at Elan, um, no surveillance system gave MVR native MVR playback within the control interface, right? You have this beautiful control system and you always had to go to the surveillance app to go back to get your MVR playback. Well, that, that seems silly. So we solved that problem and it took off. It was a great pain point for dealers from a price point. It, it was certainly not the most economical solution, but it solved the problem. And, and that's kind of the, the viewpoint of what we're, we're bringing to RTI is trying to make it simpler and easier for integrators to have one platform that they can scale and grow their business around from a single room control to you know a Buffalo Wild Wings to a corporate enterprise to huddle rooms um, and, and everything in between. And, and we truly can't do that. You don't have to have multiple control solutions in your portfolio um, that you have to learn and train and, and support. You can just lean in on one that can take you from all of this. But uh yeah. So when you rambling, were rambling, no, no, there, that, that, that's a, that's a great, great, uh, I, I followed the the train all the way through. So that, that was great. Um, and we went back and picked up some passengers, you know, earlier on and <laughs> the Elon stuff. But, uh, when, um, when you looked at coming to join, um, your, your former boss, Joe Roberts, and now your current boss, um, what was the, the attraction there for, for RTI for you? Yeah, it's so RTI, um, it kind of we kind of joke RTI was most dealers' first control system, um, and so RTI is this venerable uh, company that has been integrator focused since 1992. Uh, so it's a it's a great brand that I felt just was under hiding its light under a bushel, just not not talking around it. It's 
it had a, a lot of opportunity is, is kind of the, is, was what the brand itself was interesting to me about. Cause I've, I've done work with RTI back in the, with when I was at snap AV and then again, it's been since 1992. So it's, it's a tried and true brand. Uh, but yeah. a lot of it was um, people, um, you know, I've, I've, we were talking before we started recording uh, a lot of what we do is, is making sure we're, we get with the right people. And I'm not denigrating any of the past companies that I was at, but I, I, I'm, um, I like to get things done and I like to try to do things as quickly as possible. And I want to work with people that I want to work with. And as, as things have changed in this industry and this consolidation and investment from different sources, you get some competing interests that aren't focused necessarily, in my opinion, on, on, on getting things done and focusing on the integrator. So uh, mm -hmm. the big attraction for me was working with Joe, uh, mm -hmm. working with Neil Ellsworth, uh, Kevin Marty and the team at RTI and Bill Hensley and others and, and starting to invest in this business with more talent from a couple different places um, and start to, to really talk about it, which is what we're doing now to let people know, you know, RTI is a trusted brand and you should trust it because it's been around since 1992, but we're not the same old RTI. We're not the ones that you think, you know, um, and we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll dive into a little bit more specifics of, of why you should come and take a look on that. But it's, it's, it's a great time to be to RTI. I've been saying that since I've walked in the door, I say it at our internal meetings. I talk to my team about it. We talk to our sales team. We talk to our, everybody that's coming in. This is a great time to be at RTI. It is only up uh, from here. So that that's kind of a, the simplistic viewpoint of, of why RTI. Just just looking to, to get yeah. into a smaller, more more nimble place to, to get more things done. That makes a lot of sense. I can see that being the case where um, the bigger a company gets, the more bureaucratic it is and the more cooks in the kitchen, that type of thing. And, and if you're used to uh, being nimble, that, that can be pretty frustrating. And to see that this, you know, that RTI is still, um, you know, although he's not the CEO, the CTO is the founder of the company. Um, this, the, the kind of the brains behind the products, right? Um, Kevin Marty, um, right. still back there doing, um, the, the hard work. And, uh, I, I think that, you know, he's one of those silent, like kind of behind the scenes guys that most of the industry don't realize, uh, all the work that he's done over the years. And uh, he's still based in Minneapolis, uh, the uh, the Twin Cities area. Is that correct? He is. He lives on the outskirts. He lives in uh, Prior Lake, uh, which is just outside the offices in Shakopee. Um, so, yeah, but he's the, there. He goes to office every day. Uh, he, he's, yeah. he went, During COVID, he went to the office every day. Okay. Um, it's funny. You talk to Kevin as a quiet guy. Um, yeah. and everyone that's in the industry saying he's 6'5", you can't miss him. Uh, super uh -huh. quiet. But uh, as we talk about, you know, what, what is, what do you think in 20 years, what are you going to be doing? He just kind of goes, I just can't imagine doing anything else. He loves <laughs> the space. He loves the industry. He, he and John Dembski started RTI in a dorm room at the university of Minnesota, mm. uh, building solutions to be able to control lexicon. I mean, you can't get any more OG than that. So um, yeah. that's the DNA of the company and then building solutions um, <laughs> from the get go. And then just focusing on, on integrators. That's, that's all, mm. all they've ever done at RTI. And that's all we're ever really want to do at RTI is just focus on building solutions for the integrator. Um, and it's, it's funny, it's internally a, a lot of the stuff because Kevin is just, he's adamant in making sure that we put the integrator first. Mm. Um, and a lot of the, the power behind RTI is that it, it is truly 100% custom. You can make it look whatever, however you want from the graphical user interface, which is, which is unique. Um, yeah. A lot of the, our competition has made a lot of hay with making it simple and easy and repeatable to to get mm -hmm. the same deployment. And it, there's a place for that. Um, it right. makes it easier to not make mistakes. But you're also look your install looks like your competitors install, which looks like their competitors install, and everybody has the same solution. And that's great for building a control brand, right? If I'm running that control brand that I want everything to look the same, I'm building my brand. RTI is building the integrator's brand. We're we're about making them successful so that they can have a strong business moving forward. I, we don't want it to be branded RTI. We want you to take the customization capabilities to build it. And in subsequent releases of our uh, integration designer tool, we have created it to be as simple and as fast as any of the cookie cutter competitors mm -hmm. that are in the space. So you can deploy you know, a, a full home solution in 15, 20 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. once you're trained and you're driving forward and you can save that, you can use it over and over and over again. And it's the same as anybody else's. Or you can mm -hmm. truly get into and make it a bespoke solution that makes it where you're putting your brand first and the customer's first, first. And it's all the same tool. That's the power of RTI. And that's one mm -hmm. thing that, that Kevin Marty has has built and has always insisted that we, we maintain. Uh, and we, we're not going to get away from that. We, we sometimes try to not give 
uh, integrators as many tools uh, to make as custom as possible. Like one of the things is a calendar. We're working on a calendar view, and <laughs> we've we've had some pretty de- pretty strong debates around. It just needs to be a calendar. We don't need to be able to customize how wide the calendar of the day is and all that <laughs> other stuff. And so, I mean, that that's how serious Kevin takes it, which I, which is a great thing. If you're an integrator, you love that. You love that someone's just going to to fight tooth and nail to continue to give you the tools to be successful in your business. Yeah, it's interesting. I hear, um, I, I, obviously, I don't live it day to day and designing systems. So I go with manufacturer tells me this is the the way that we should do this because we need to simplify it for the dealer and the integrator. And then you, you get a, a lot of that happening in the industry. And then you start hearing conversation. I, I want more control over my design. You know, I want to be able to do this. And then like, but should you have the control of the design? You know, cause I go back and forth on it and I hear what you're saying that if you can simplify the tools to, to make it custom, then you can, you can have both, you know, you can, okay. you can keep, keep it lean and mean and, um, per, you know, make, make those get, get in and out of those designs pretty qu- quickly, but still make it your own. Um, and also you're, you're saving the template then, you know, that you created. Yeah. So you're not having to redo it every time if you don't want to. Exactly. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. The, the other thing that that I think that integrators do a lot of times is that I'm going to talk out both sides of my mouth a little bit. So from the custom experience <laughs> of what the user interface looks like, that should be whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be the same thing, you great. But where they get into trouble is when they add a lot of unique subsystems that's different from every install that they do. For example, this install Samsung, this one's Sony, this one's LG, uh, or somebody wants to integrate some one of the other, um, you know, fan companies products. The, mm-hmm. the big CE products are the ones that always get us in trouble or those small esoteric ones because they'll push an update and they'll break an integration. And as mm-hmm. much as we try to stay on top of that, it's just really difficult to do. And that's where a lot of dealers get in trouble. So where I would say from my perspective is try to standardize on what your solutions that you provide from an attached to your control, but make your control to be as close custom as bespoke as possible. That'll mm. build the most robust system overall, because that's that, you know, some custom, some of the control systems really proud of themselves on being the most open system in the space. We have the most integrations. And to me, I look at that as like, that's, that's kind of bad. You know, if I can work with everything, I'm not going to work great with everything. And I should really lean into what the big movers are and wrap a fantastic integration of, of the, you know, what's 90 plus percent of every install. And then that's what we're focusing on. You know, we, we always want to integrate with more. We don't want to tell integrators no, because like I just said, it's not in our DNA to do that. But we strongly yeah. push them as like, hey, standardize. Let's standardize and let's get that driver to be rock solid. And then let's let's make some unique things possible with that RTI integration. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Um, you know, the, the, the evolution too, as far as just the handheld remote part of the business, uh, there's been such a, I guess, lack of attention toward the handheld remote for a long stretch of time. And of course, some of that was supply chain. Things just stopped evolving for a bit. But then um, then you start seeing like the, the product you mentioned back at Control 4 came out and it was an iteration of that Neo remote, which I have in my house and I still want to crack it into every now and then um, when it disconnects from my network. And I, um, I keep having to talk my wife down from the ledge about she wants the whole system taken out when the remote doesn't work. So the remote is so important to yeah. the system because it's what most people know who are into, into the tech. But um, it, it started to kind of fall by the wayside a little bit with like streamer remotes that just, you know, seem to work, you know, just fine uh, on the TV. And then the, obviously the, the voice control was late um, to the to our industry after, you know, basically content companies came out with their own versions of it. So I guess it, it started to kind of think, seem like, well, is the remote control going to go away? But I think that it's making a, you know, a comeback here for our, our space, right? You've got a really strong product there and there's some others that are out there. And right. what, what do you have in development there? What, what's current uh, state yeah. of the art for you? Yeah. So uh, we have two new remotes that are coming that will be at Cedia. Um, and we're pushing to have them um, selling right around Cedia. So to be in the market, uh, it's our ISR2 and our ISR4. Uh, so you know, most of the dealers know our current lineup. They've, they've been in the market, some iteration of the other from our T2 and our T4. Um, and uh, these are our, uh, our it's not some reimagining of them, but it's it's making the the robust RTI infrastructure, but making it look a little more current from the aesthetics. So, so we'll have all the functionality, the control. RSR four is going to have a a four inch touchscreen, 
RSR2 is going to have a, a, a 2.8 uh, that's fully customizable, again, just like any aspects that you have from RTI. Um, and a series of, on the ISR2, we're going to have a full keypad from a touch uh, point standpoint. Uh, so it's going to look uh, very current, very modern, sleeker than some of the old RTI remotes. We've got um, a, a, an improved base for them, make it simpler and easier to, to mount. Uh, something that's going to be really cool is that we've got to have a, a new, what we're calling a smart base, which is uh, which will be an accessory that you can buy that's got a remote finder button on it. So kind of like if you've dropped your phone somewhere and you, you want mm-hmm. to ping it, it'll ping the remote up you find it. But we also have three assignable, completely custom buttons on the boat remote base. So uh, we've heard this one from integrators from years. I've heard it at every company I've been at. It'd be really cool if on the charging base you could make programmable buttons that could run a scene, right? Home, mm-hmm. away, all off, uh, theater. So as you go to pick up the remote, you can press a button, you can start the routine and then start to watch it. Um, so that that base will be coming out with as well. But the, the really unique thing about this is that the accessory base has a, an access point built into it. So you just mentioned our friend Neo and its Wi-Fi connectivity. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Wi-Fi is a bugaboo. It's not always quick. There's a, the, the balance act of sucking my battery and maintaining that connection versus that quick connection if I don't suck my battery to do it. So we're solving that by having the ability to have an access point built into the base station that's dedicated for the remotes that you always have that instant on connection but we're also making it where there's going to be a separate SID, ssid that will be available as a problem solver so you can mm. extend it into a room say if it's if it's a retrofit it's over a garage and you can't pull a wire to it and you need to put something else onto a network then you'll be able to use that base for that so it's it's a it's a iterative approach to solving from the remote from the aesthetics it's going to be i mean remote technologies incorporated rti was built on building remotes uh, sure. It's in our DNA, and that's what we do well. So they're robust, good, solid remotes. Not as big as our past remotes, which is passes the uh, the wife acceptance factor for a lot of us, my wife included. Um, but uh, with updated with the Wi-Fi and some unique features from what we're going to be doing in our bases. So uh, that'll be at Cedia. Uh, they'll we'll have a full interactive hands-on touch feel. Check those out. We showed these at ISE uh, in Barcelona this year. Got a lot of great reception. So we're really excited about this. And as I said, these are scheduled to come out in that late September time frame. So nice. that'll be new and exciting. Yeah, that sounds really smart the way that's all figured out there with the base. Um I hadn't thought thought that um as an option. So really cool that that you've come up with that solution. Um so uh and I'll jump around a little bit too. I want to definitely focus on the Resi side and and Cedia, but you read Infocom, and and I know that uh, that was a big show for you because you've got the commercial side as well. Um, what sort of solutions were you showing there for the folks who, you know, diversify their offerings and cross over into um, what, whether it's like the the Buffalo Wild Wings you mentioned, the yeah. retail side side of it, restaurants or or um, even you know office buildings, that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we, we, we lean into what the power of RTI is one single platform that can do any installation. And so we, we showed uh, the verticals that we're, that we're really uh, focusing on in the commercial because commercial is such a huge bucket. What does that mean? Right. Are you trying to do the city group tower in New York? Or are you trying to do, um, you know, Dr. Miller's dentist office down the street? So what, how we are putting that in the verticals is that we're, we're calling education, house of worship, um, hospitality, which is our bars and restaurants. And we're doing unified communication slash corporate. That's what we're focusing on. So what we did is that we we used our new, uh, we have new touch panels, by the way. Uh, new touch panels will be mm-hmm. shipping here in the next few weeks, our ST5 and IST10. Um, we we showed on our new touch panels uh, all the power of our, our graphical interface and control uh, for to, to really make bespoke solutions for each one of those verticals. So in education, we showed a lecture hall that you could, um, that was actually on the touch panel itself drawn out so you could see each piece that you wanted to control we went from a larger lecture hall did a breakout room switched back and forth house of worship we did the same type of a thing so showing you know being able to control if you want the nave if you want the main chapel if you want the you know the, the, the narthex all those aspects to show that you can you can build that right it's not just a list on the left that you name uh for a subsystem it's, it looks like the installation looks and it really hit home with our customers did the same thing for conferencing room um we did the same thing with the bars and restaurants and since we are a full-blown con- control solution right we're not just a touch panel or a tablet maker we control everything it, it gives you the power uh that, to show what you can do with this as an integrator specifically for a hospitality so we, we can build multiple different permissions and we show like a bar owner 
the bar owner has the entire layout of their restaurant with every subsystem within that in the facility that they can control. They can look at the cameras. They can do access control. They can look at the control of the TVs. And then we had a manager view, which had less things, being able to just move the TVs from our, our uh, VIP solution, which is our um, IP-based um, video management. And then just the bartender's integration, being able to just switch, right? Do video matrix, do you know, content switching, whatever you wanted to do. That really resonated as well. Uh, but the, we got the most attention. This was, this was uh, we put a lot of work into this in, in kind of our, our unified, our UC communications and our conferencing solutions. So we have a, a, our IVB50, which is our video bar. Um, but we, what we're selling is not the video bar as much as the overall RTI solution. It's a meeting. It's a huddle room where you can bring your own device. You can bring your own meeting. Um, you can also cast or airplay to the bar itself. So it's a really useful solution um, that handles the video because it's got a camera built into the video bar. The audio, mm -hmm. it can see that it can pick up the the um, signal from up to 20, 25 people in a, in a room. Um, and it, it's a smart AI built into the camera where it can move into you know presenter mode. It follows the first person to speak. It does to whoever's speaking and then it reframes it and zooms and you can do presets. And this is all integrated back in that user interface. And it's a pre-built template within RTI that integrators can deploy a, a fully controlled conferencing room solution that does lights, shades, projector, and then allows you to have run the meeting from it as well. So um, that's what we leaned into. Uh, we got a great reception. It was a great show for us. It was the, the most overall interaction that we've had. And, in, in, you know, I'm, I'm new since December, but from what the team told me in, in the last several years, uh, we had the most traffic that, and that we've had for years and years and a lot of excitement around the solutions because we're not, we're not trying to sell ingredients I know, you know, Joe Lautner, he used to always talk about ingredients versus meals. We don't want to sell just ingredients. We want to sell meals because that's the power mm. of the control and automation solution that we are. And so we're, we're bringing this, these solutions to you. So, you know, yeah, we sell the bar, but the bar is part of the overall RTI intelligent meeting solution. Uh, that's, uh, that sounds really exciting for that part of the um, industry. And um, I, I don't I want to pivot back to um, the Cedia channel a little bit then and mm -hmm talk about besides the new remotes and you've got the new touch panels, which I'm sure, you know, apply both to resi and commercial. Um, what else are we looking at in terms of uh, bringing RTI into this, um, Absolutely. you know, current world yeah. that we're in? Well, I'll tell you, it's, you know, it's a little bit of a um, <laughs> uh, minutia here, but I'll just dive into the touch <laughs> panels briefly, just, just so, so guys get a middle picture and, and go check it out. So we're proud yeah. of our touch panels. It's a, it's a five inch and a 10 inch. Uh, um, we we've had in the years past, we've had multiple different size offerings and just looking at kind of what sells and talking to the integrators, a 10 inch is, is, um, is a nice screen. And eventually we may go to a larger one, but 10 inch serves a lot of the solutions, especially when you have a very thin bezel. So uh, we have the thinnest bezel on the market. It's 11 millimeters. So the area that's not a screen, 11 millimeters. Also the thinnest off the wall, it's also 11 millimeter stand off the wall. Um, it's uh, the 10 inches got the, the full camera with ambient light sensor, uh, the, the proximity sensor, far field microphone array. Uh, it's also got a physical mute buttons that you can physically turn the, the microphone off if you don't want your favorite voice uh, clients at to listen. And it's also <laughs> got a physical shutter on the camera if you really are concerned about your privacy because some people don't want a camera to so that application. You can turn mm -hmm. all that off in the software, both that and the mute and the camera. But if you really want to make sure you can physically close it, which is unique in space. Another mm -hmm. unique feature is that it mounts portrait or landscape. Not everybody's mm -hmm. touch panels can do that in the space. So we, we it allows you to solve problems uh, or use different applications uh, with those touch panels. Our five inch is the same from uh, the um, overall dimensions of what the 11 millimeters from the bezel and then the standoff. It does not have the camera in it because we, we view that as it could go into secondary tertiary rooms, bedrooms and things like that. Hmm. Um, but um, these are also priced aggressively and not, you know, go talk to your, your sales rep or your local outlet for RTI. But we, we really want a high attach on these, uh, these products, especially that five inch. It's aggressively priced. Because we think that people could want to have that control, um, and it solves a lot of problems. MDUs, uh, small form factors, just, just other just controllers. Things where keypads were in the past or volume controls, you can place this in, and it's not that that different of a price point. And it's a much richer experience. Uh, so that, that's kind of the, the mechanical features around the touch panels um, and all, all the, 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 the expected things that you need from a software standpoint. 
uh, yeah, happening there as well. Uh, but some other new products that we showed and that are actually shipping right now. So we've got two new uh, audio amplifiers out and an audio matrix out. So we've uh, updated our AD line. So we have our uh, um, AD46 and our AD8010. So that's a, an eight channel and a 16 channel uh, with two channels out that are uh, line level that you can loop out to do to grow into systems. These are full DSP matrix amps. There are 50 watts per channel, all channels driven. Uh, you can bridge it to four ohms and get 100 watts if you need to. They've got some uh, mixing capabilities as well. So you can put a mic in and uh, do some mixing. So this has a utility and they sound great. So it's a great application residential. Uh, but since some of that mic mixing and some of that priority um, that you can set up in the software, it makes it a really great use case for, like I said, a small dentist office, small bar and mm-hmm. restaurant that doesn't have a lot of speakers. It's a great solution. Uh, it's dead nuts simple to get implemented into an RTI solution. And you, the, con, the, the, the amount of control that you have of setting this up to make sure it sounds great uh, is, is pretty much unprecedented from the input gains, the, the attack levels, the uh, output gains. And as I said, it's a, you know, it's a five band parametric EQ. You can load presets into your, your favorite speakers. It'll have some preloaded onto it. Um, it's, you know, it could do doorbells. It's, it's got more than you can possibly list out now that without boring your hard listeners to death here, but um, <laughs> I encourage you to take a look at it. These two are aggressively priced. They also have digital inputs in into them for that, that matrix, um, the, the DSP matrix amplification. Uh, people that have been asking for that for a while for multiple different control systems. And so as, as you know, we saw uh, through our great value distribution partner. So mm-hmm. if you're not an RTI customer and you're and you, you should take a look at these amps for your other control solution because they're really built to be able to uh, give a great audio signal. Um, sounds great. And then just the, the, again, back to the, the presets and the controls are just un, un, uh, unparalleled in the space. So really you're at a point now with the company that, you know, you could say, yeah, a lot of folks got started with RTI first control system. Um, but a veteran company, if they're just not happy with what they've got going. They've moved on from RTI years ago. Um, it, it's a mature brand now with a lot of sophisticated electronics and hardware. You got, you know, an answer for them, even if they've been doing this for a long time, or if they're getting started, yep. it, that's also a great opportunity as well. But um, it, it, you're kind of like, welcome back. Come on, let's let's do this again. <laughs> if you if you yeah. thought you knew us, come back and see how sophisticated we've gotten. Over well, the well said, and. Uh, I, I, Completely agree. And it's also that the software has evolved too. Integration Designer is is a really powerful tool, um, and it and it makes you as the integrator the star. That's what I, I can't emphasize that enough. This, it's about you. It's not about us as RTI, right? We, we we build solutions to make your business successful and to make you successful. So you really should take a look at what the power of this solution is to make you that successful. Um, and 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 it is what the other thing that's unique about us is it's it's really really important to us as a company. You know, it's it's me and Joe and Kevin. Um, you can know us. We want to know mm-hmm. you. It's personal relationships where a lot of these companies, uh, the most com- successful companies in the space from from dealer loyalty, it's, it's relationships, and we want to build relationships. If there's a problem, call us. You know, it's it's we're easy to find. There's not a committee that needs to meet. I was joking with someone at Infocom. They had a question for us. And it's like everybody that needs to weigh on this decision was in with five feet. Come talk to us. <laughs> right? right. And I, and I think for that's important for a lot of guys in this space. And I really want to stress that we, we want to have relationships with, with integrators. We, we want to get to know you. We want to know your business. We want to know your, your families. And, and we all want to just help each other be successful in the space. And it's, it's not, it's nothing more complicated than that. There's not competing interests. There's not a whole series of other things that have to be serviced based on the the structure of the business. It's just us. That's what we say internally. It's just us. Let's, let's figure this out and do right by our integrators. Yeah, that, that's a great message. And I think one that uh, a lot of veterans in the industry would love to hear because I think, you know, we've gotten uh, to a point when we go to a CDA expo, I I made the joke a while back that at some point it's just going to be like five big giant booths at the show because of all the, companies coming together and all that, but, uh, you've got this kind of, uh, you know, nostalgic, uh, you know, vibe going for the CI channel that everyone loved about the channel that, uh, that, that, that connection between the dealer and the the manufacturer that's personal without being old school, you know, you've got the, the current technology and, and have evolved. So it's a great combination and, um, great message. So hopefully folks will, will connect with you and, uh, if not before CDA, definitely at CDA. And, um, you know, 
Mike, it's been great getting caught, caught up. I'm glad things are going well for you. And it sounds like the brand is on track. Yeah, well, uh, Jeremy, I appreciate the time. I, I enjoyed the kind of that flew by like that for me. So hopefully I didn't just drone <laughs> on uh, for people, but would love, love the conversation. And, and yeah, well said. We, we truly, it's important to us. It really matters to us to forge these relationships and in some cases reestablish relationships. We know that uh, in the past, there's been some things that we didn't do great. Um, we, we would love the opportunity to earn the, the, the business back. And it starts having conversations. It's just us. Come see us at Cedia. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out to it. Yeah, it's just Mike Jordan, like the the basketball player at RTIcontrol.com. Any questions, anytime, I, I would be delighted to to connect and and just talk. So I, I appreciate the time, Jeremy. Well, thanks for your time. Really great talking to you, and uh, wish you well. I look forward to seeing you in person at uh, in uh, Denver. So, uh, Mike Jordan is Chief Product Officer at RTI, and. Like you said, you can email him, um, but also you can learn more about the company just going at the website, rticontrol.com. And that wraps up today's show, which was produced by Residential Tech Today, IPW, and Pretty Easy Podcasts. If you're new to Residential Tech Talks, please subscribe to the podcast wherever you watched or listened to this episode. Also, check out all the latest residential tech news at our magazine's website, restechtoday.com, where you can also subscribe uh, to the print or digital magazine and to our Tuesday and Thursday email newsletters. Until next time, please stay safe, stay inspired, and let us know if you have a great story to tell. Residential Lighting Specialist to Residential Tech Talks.